Welcome to Lady Eagles Softball on the Faulkner Sports Network. Today we have the Lady Eagles against the Rams of the University of Mobile. So it's a conference game today, and both teams here have an 8-2 record in conference. Faulkner's playing down their stretch of ranked teams. They split with Middle Georgia earlier this year, facing number 13 Mobile today, and they face William Carey tomorrow. So they're 15-8 and eight overall, 5-3 and three at home, 8-2 and two in conference. Mobile, 16-7 and seven overall. They're 9-2, and two, or... Nine and two at home, three and three away, eight and two in conference. So both teams have been pretty competitive this year so far. Faulkner looking to get one here. They split earlier this year against Alabama State. And as mentioned before, they split with Middle Georgia. Rams have been a perennial program, seeing the top 25 frequently these past couple of years. It's been a habit. They had a won two out of three with Spring Hill earlier in the year. Went to a couple neutral site tournaments. The and CFA, NFCA leadoff classic, where they went three and two there. They hosted the Gulf Shores Invitational and won their two games that they played there. They split with Stillman College in conference and split with William Carey for their two conference losses. Faulkner split with Bruton Parker, Middle Georgia. Swept Point and Blue Mountain along with UT Southern. So they'll face number 13 Mobile today and then number 19 William Carey tomorrow at home and then for their last game in this home stretch, they'll face Thomas University on April 3rd. A rescheduled date from the 15th. It was originally on the 15th, but there was some rain, so that pushed that game away. And then on the road, they'll face Stillman College away, Bruton Parker away, Middle Georgia and then Mobile as well. And then at home they'll face Oakwood again. Point at home as well. And then they'll finish off their season away at Thomas. So both teams still have a stretch of schedule left. Because Mobile will still have to play Middle Georgia, William Carey, and Stillman. So, it's not easy, but this is an important conference series for both of the teams. Let's take a look at the SSAC standings thus far. Faulkner and Mobile are tied first overall. 
And it's Carrie Middle, Stillman, Bruton Parker, Thomas, Blue Mountain, UT Southern, Point. So that will be, those are the current standings based on today. And today can really change some things up. So Faulkner's currently on a four-game win streak and Mobile's on a three-game win streak. As I said before, both eight and two in conference play so far. Go over the lineups when we begin. And we'll be right back after this. Starting off for the Lady Eagles today, it'll be leading off and batting first. Number one, Chloe Davidson, second base. Batting second will be number three, playing DP, Anna Catherine Seagrest. Batting third, playing shortstop, number 15, Anna Purvis. Batting fourth, playing first base. Number, number double zero, Madeline Becker. Batting fifth, playing catcher. Number eight, Gracie Pittman. Batting sixth, playing third base. Number 17, Erica Mitchell. Batting seventh, playing left field. Number 16, Ivy Hill. Batting eighth, playing center field. Number two, Abby Terrell. And then batting ninth, playing right field. Eva Polk. Along with, in, in the circle today will be Caitlin Ennis.
Eagles starting off here on defense today. So they're the home team. In the circle is number six, Caitlin Ennis, the sixth year senior from Niceville, Florida. Ennis posting a 3.02 ERA with a four and two record. Appeared nine times. Pitched 51 innings, allowed 57 hits, 28 runs, 22 of those earned. Walked 17 with 33 strikeouts, allowed four doubles, two triples. It's a 279 batting average against. So really impressive stats there. Alabama State, she reached the 300 strikeout mark. It's an impressive, an impressive feat right there. First pitch is away. At bat now is number 33, Megan McCarthy. McCartney, excuse me, Megan McCartney with a 308 batting average on the season so far coming into the game. So 2 0 count now. That one misses. Away is up. Oh well. So be a 3 0 count now. That one's called strike, so it's 3-1 now. McCartney played in nine games, 26 at-bats, scored five runs with eight hits, one double, one home run, five RBI, a 4-6-2 slugging, and a 2-9-6 on base percentage. She struck out once with two stolen bases, and that one caught the zone. So it's a full now count now. Payoff pitch coming. Hits that one. Drops into left field. So that will be a base hit for Megan McCartney. So a single to left field will get her on to first and bring up Caitlin McCree. Caitlin, yep, Caitlin McCree, the first baseman. A shortstop this game, excuse me. From Mobile, Alabama, transfer from Coastal Alabama Community College. Senior this year. That one's delivered. Bit low. Bunted foul. So it's 2 1. McCree posting a 3 5 6 batting average. Played in all 23 games. 73 at bats. Scored 18 runs with 26 hits, 5 doubles, 1 home run, 10 RBI, and a 4 6 6 slugging percentage. That one's popped up high. Becker is able to make the grab. So that'll be a P3, and McCartney will remain on first to put one away. Bring up Lily Lanham. Lanham, the second baseman from Baymanette, Alabama. That one's grounded past the pitcher. That'll be a one, one six four to retire the side. So the one six four double play 
will get both out and bring us to the middle of the first. This is Lady Eagle Softball on the Faulkner Sports Network. Chloe Davidson at bat for the Lady Eagles. Playing second base today in the field. That one catches the zone from a strike. Emily Butts in the circle for Mobile. A senior from Pell City, Alabama. Butts with a 1-2-2 two, two ERA, 7-4 and four record. That one's fouled and hits the home dugout. Brought to you by Jacob Bear of Alpha Insurance. So 0-2 count now. But sixth pitched 63 in one third innings. Allowed 39 hits with 16 runs. 11 of those earned. Walked 12 with 37 strikeouts. And a 1-7-1 batting average against. That one's called away. So 1-2 count. Allowed two doubles, two triples, two home runs. Faced 228 batters. Butts gets the sign, the delivery. That one is grounded down toward Vander Ford and then get it to Simmons in time. So that'll be a 5-3. Bring up designated player Anna Catherine Segrist. Segrist with a 377 batting average on the year. 77 at bat, scoring 21 runs with 29 hits, one double, five RBI, and a 390 slugging. She walked six times, hit by pitch one with a 419 on base. Six three will retire Seagrass, and that'll put two away and bring up senior Anna Purvis playing shortstop today. That one's called in the zone for a strike. But it's delivery. That one's called in the zone, so it'll be an 0-2. That one hit towards McCree, and that'll be in time, so that'll be a base hit for Purvis, beats out the throw. Bringing up Madeline Becker, player of the week this week. 12 RBIs, an OPS 
of 1.44, believe. Some impressive outings at Blue Mountain and UTS. That one's chopped towards Vanderford and get to Simmons in time. So the 5-3 will retire to side. Bring us to the second when we come back. This is Lady Eagle Softball on the Faulkner Sports Network. Mia Simmons batting for Mobile. First pitch called strike. That one fouled off. So brought to you by Jacob Bear of Alpha Insurance. Ennis gets the sign, delivers. That one. Away. One two now for Simmons. Checks on that one. So two two now. Simmons posting the highest batting average of the Mobile lineup today with a 370 average. That one's a bit low. Runs it full. Played in 12 games. It's over has 27 at-bats. Scored four runs with 10 hits. One double, five RBIs, 407 slugging, and a 457 OPS. An on-base percentage, excuse me, not OPS. That one fouled. That'll be a 3-2. So Simmons will walk. In the payoff pitch. Gracie Vanderford. Will looks like there's a pinch runner coming in at first, number four. So Aaron Degrees will be coming in at first, the sophomore from Bayou Blue, Louisiana. That one's hit up to the right side. So that will be a single for Vanderford. Degrees will advance to second. Number nine, Jill Robinson. The 281 batting average on the season. Over 64 at bats with 18 hits, four doubles, one triple, one home run. 4 2 2 slugging percentage, 3 7 8 on base percentage, with two stolen bases on the season. First one away for a ball. So two runners on, none away if you're just joining us. That one catches his own first strike. 1 1 count now, top of the second. Game one of the doubleheader today. That one bunted foul. Faulkner wearing their blue uniforms today. 
Mobile wearing their black uniforms. High 60s, low 70s right now. Wind blowing to the right, about 13 miles an hour. That one's popped up. Becker camps underneath. So P3 will make the runners remain the same. Put one away and bring up the designated player for Mobile, Madeline Sheffield. That one misses away. Sheffield with a 3-2-1 batting average on the season. Played 18 games. Scored nine runs with 18 hits, four doubles, two triples, two home runs, 12 RBI. That one misses. 571 slugging percentage. Walked four times with a 377 on base percentage. And three stolen bases. So 2 0 count now. That one's hit up past the foul net. So. Two and one. I got a cust gust of wind catching up now. That one catches the zone. So two, two now. So one away with two runners on. One in scoring position. That one's hit up high. Miss Reed there. Looks like three fielders went for it. So just going to go base hit on that. So base hit to center. It looks like Purvis went over and then Terrell was there too, along with Hill. So three defenders on the ball there. No one able to get to it. That'll bring up Maddie Evans. First pitch called strike. Evans fouls that one back. So that'll be an 0-2 count. Need some more softballs. And the foul ball brought to you by Jacob Bear of Alpha Insurance. That one's a bit high. Everyone's a candidate on a pitch like that, just in case it goes wild or becomes a pass ball. Everybody looking to get home. Evans Jr. from Loosedale, Mississippi. That one is makes good contact, goes down the left field line, but it's just foul. So Mobile with three on and one away right now. Good position for them. That one's fouled straight back. A lot of opportunity right now for both the Eagles, Lady Eagles and the Rams. That one's a bit high. So it's a 2-2 count now. Base is loaded, one away. Top of the second right now. Okay, 
That'll run the count full. So a full count for Evans. Makes good contact, hit well up the middle. Terrell will get it to Purvis. But Degrees will score. So a single up the middle will bring Evans to first and advance everyone. Score Degrees. So an RBI single there. Bringing up Kristen Black, center field today. Senior from Sarah Land, Alabama. That one called strike. So 1-0 now, one away. Base is loaded still. That one misses, one and one. Delivery, that one's popped up. So called infield fly. So nobody moves. That'll bring Mobile back up to the top of the order. So Megan McCartney. Up again. Pardon me, had a single last time up. That one called strike, so it's an 0 2 count now. So 0 2, two away, bases loaded. Nobody moved on the infield fly. That one's a bit high. So it's a one-two count, as I said before, two away. Base is still loaded. Chance to get out of this. Not much damage. It's high. Strikes are out there. That will retire the side with minimal damage. So one run with three hits, no errors. Stranded all three on base. And this is Lady Eagle Softball on the Faulkner Sports Network.
after a three up, three down for the Lady Eagles. Gracie Pittman will be up to bat. That one's hit up high. Gree camping underneath, so the P6 will retire Pittman. Third baseman, number 17, Erica Mitchell. That'll bring up third baseman, number 17, Erica Mitchell. For the Lady Eagles. That one's a bit high. If you're just joining in. Caitlin Ennis ended the top of the second with a clutch bases loaded strikeout. Mitchell hits that one up high. And it drops to right center. So that's a single for Mitchell. The left fielder number 16. Ivy. Bring up Ivy Hill. Playing left field in game one. Butts gets the sign. Delivers. Hill hits that one up over the head of Lanham, and that will score Mitchell. So a stand up double there will score Mitchell. RBI double. Center fielder, number two, Abby Terrell. First pitch called strike. So score is 1-1, one, one. the RBI double, the equalizer, as of right now. Big cut on that one. So 0-2 oh now, one away, runner in scoring position. That one misses. So one two now. That one catches the zone. So that'll retire Abby Terrell. Bring up Evie Polk. Batting in the nine hole spot today, playing right field. That one's popped up, and McCartney will make the grab and put the side away. So the F9 will retire the side, bring us to the top of the third. And this is Lady Eagle Softball on the Faulkner Sports Network.
So both runners in scoring position, no outs. Tie ball game right now in the top of the third. That'll bring up Mia Simmons to the plate. That one's in the zone for a strike. So 0-1 count now. <laughs> Big cut on that one. Can't get any piece of it. So 0-2. That one just misses. So one, two now. Now the wind's picking up a little bit from the beginning of the game. That one misses as well, so it'll be two, two. Big cut on that, so that will retire Simmons with a swinging strikeout. One away, still two on, bringing up Gracie Vanderford. Vanderford one for one so far. That one catches. So 0 1 now. O one, one away. Bunt popped up. Becker isn't able to get it. So it's a Tough grab right there. So the sacrifice bunt attempt. Turns into base hit. Becker really had to move in field. RBI single puts runner on the corners. Robinson will hit a sacrifice fly to right. That'll score Lanham. Bring up. Madeline Sheffield. That one's a bit low. The score is 3-1 now. With two away. Action moved fast. That one makes good contact. Makes it into left, so single into left for Sheffield. We'll advance Vanderford to second. Bringing up Maddie Evans. Evans with an RBI single her last time up. Ennis delivers. That one popped up high. Hill makes the grab. It's just in fair territory. So the F7 will retire the side and limit the damage. Two runs, four hits, no errors, and two left on base at the end of the top of the third. And this is Lady Eagle Softball on the Faulkner Sports Network.
baseman, number one, Chloe Davidson. Back at the top of the lineup for the Lady Eagles, Chloe Davidson. That one grounded foul. Coming into the game, Davidson posted a 4.68 season batting average so far. That one hit up to Vanderford and to Simmons in time. Butts with the delivery, that one chopped foul. Cut on that one, can't get it. just a bit low. A one, two count with one away. That one misses as well. Makes contact, just rolls foul down the left field line. Out on that one. Seeger strikes out to put one more away, and Purvis will be up for the Lady Eagles. That one makes good contact, but flies foul to the right, past the fence. That one fouled off. So 0 2 now. That one popped up. McCartney underneath it makes the grab. So the F9 will. Retire the Lady Eagles with nothing across in the bottom of the third. We'll be back with the top of the fourth in a few short moments.
Kristen Black at the dish for the Rams. That one misses away. 1-0 count. That one misses, so 2-0 now. That one catches. It's a 2 1. Just joining us, it's the top of the fourth. 3 1 is your score with Mobile leading. That one's hit up. Right center. So a single for Black. The middle, put her on first and bring up Megan McCartney. That one's fouled back over the away dugout, brought to you by Jacob Bear of Alpha Insurance. So. 0-1 count with the foul ball. Bunt drops down. Becker gets to Davidson in time. So the 3-4 sack bunt. Advance Black to second. Bring up Caitlin McCree. That one. Chop fast short. Goes up the middle. So a single to short. McCree advances on the throw, and Black will get to third. So both runners in scoring position right now. One away. Lily Lanham to bat for Mobile. That one misses. Ennis delivers. Davidson ranges over. Makes the grab. To the L4. Runners will remain on their respective bases. And Maya Simmons in the cleanup spot for Mobile today. So one count. Ennis <laughs> gets the sign. One deliver. Simmons hits that one up high. Hill camping underneath makes the grab for the F7. That will tire the side and limit the damage. Your score remains 3-1. No runs, two hits, no errors, and two left stranded. At the end of the top of the fourth. And this is Lady Eagle Softball on the Faulkner Sports Network.
misses there. Isn't able to get a piece of it. And that will retire Madeline Becker. Bring up Gracie Pittman. Delivery, that one was a bit high. <laughs> Swings on that one. It's a one one now. That one makes good contact. Let's hit straight to black. The F8 will tire Pittman. That'll bring up Erica Mitchell. That one misses. It's so a 1-0 count, two away, no runners on for the Lady Eagles in the bottom of the fourth. But it's a sign, delivers. That one hits straight to Vanderford. Vanderford to Simmons to so the 5-3, will retire the side. With nothing across to the end, to end the bottom of the fourth. And this is Lady Eagles softball on the Faulkner Sports Network. That one popped foul by Vanderford. So one count to begin the top of the fifth. That one's hit up high. Polk ranges over and makes the grab. The F9 will retire Vanderford. Bring up Jill Robinson to bat. Two zero count now for Robinson. Oh. 
Ennis rocks, fires, and that one catches his own. That one chopped to Mitchell, Mitchell to Becker. Throw is in time, 5-3 will retire Robinson. Bring up Madeline Sheffield. That one gets away. She was hit by pitch there. We'll bring up Evans. Sorry for that mistake. Went away off the contact when it hit Sheffield. That one's chopped foul left side. And that's literally where my Blind spot was as a pole for the catch net. It's right in front of the batter, so if I don't move my head on either side of it, I can't see. I didn't see it make contact. This delivers. Vince hits that one up high, and Hill is able to get to it in time. So the F7 will retire the side. And strand one at the end of the top of the fifth. This is Lady Eagle Softball on the Faulkner Sports Network. Butts has been efficient through four so far, thrown 40 pitches, 31 of those being strikes. Just a little bit over 75%. Ivy Hill at the dish. Butts, rocks, fires, delivers. That one called strike. 0 oh, 1 count now. It's the bottom of the fifth. Scores 3-1. That one misses away. So 1-1 one, one now. That one misses. So 2-1 now. Three one count, last one missing. That one grounded. Vanderford to Simmons in time. So the five three chopper will retire Hill and bring up Abby Terrell. That 
one. Hit up to Lanhan, Lanhan to Simmons. So the first pitch, 4-3. We'll retire Terrell and bring up Evie Polk. Cut on that one, can't get it. Oh, one. So it hit Polk, but saying that. Some sort of issue here. I think they're arguing whether she tried to get away from it or where she was when it hit her. So I'm assuming that would be counted as a ball. So Discussion there did not go how wins way, so Polk stays at the plate. So it's a 1 1 count. Make that 2 1 with the last miss. So a 2 1 count with two away. One foul tipped away. So 2-2 two, two with two away in the bottom of the fifth. That one chopped butts to Simmons. So the 1-3 will retire Polk and the side. Nothing across to the end of the bottom of the fifth, and we will be back with the top of the six in a few short moments. Kristen Black leading off the top of the six for Mobile. First pitch misses. That one misses, 2-0. That one popped up. Becker gets underneath it, so P3 will tire black and bring up Megan McCartney. So the top of the order for Mobile. That 
that one catches. That one chopped. Purvis gets to it, throws over to Becker. Saying that she didn't tag the bag, she was off to the side, so just a base hit right there. That one misses. That one low anyway. So McCartney will advance to second. So McCree being walked. So since it was the fourth ball, even though it would have been a wild pitch, it is not. It's just a straight up walk. Functions the same in terms of McCartney advancing at least. That one misses. So one oh count. That one hit up high. Terrell camping underneath makes the grab. The F eight will retire Lanham. McCree and McCartney. Stay in the same place. Bringing up Maya Simmons, cleanup hitter for Mobile, clean up in the cleanup spot. Looking for something here, hasn't been able to get much today other than a walk. That one misses. So 2 0 now. Two one count. Three one, excuse me. It's a three one count now. Two runners on, two away. That one hit up high. Polk camping underneath makes the grab. So the F9 will retire the side. So no runs, one hit, no errors, two stranded at the end of the top of the six. And we will be back with the Bottom of the six in a few short moments. This is Lady Eagle Softball on the Falcon Sports Network.
leading off the top or bottom of the sixth. Chloe Davidson. That one chopped foul. 0-1 count now. Let's get the sign, delivers. Davidson chops that one foul. Foul ball brought to you by Jacob Bear of Alpha Insurance. That's an 0-2 count now. The bottom of the sixth. Score is 3-1. That one delivered, chopped. Vanderford over to Simmons, so 5-3 will do the trick for the Rams and retired Davidson, bringing up Anna Catherine Segrist, playing designated player today. One delivered, misses. That one fouled off. One one now. That one delivered. Sugars pops that one up, but Simmons makes the grab in foul territory for the PF3. Bringing up Anna Purvis to bat. Two away, that one's a bit low. Two away, 1-0 count, 3-1 score. Two zero now. It's a sign, delivers. Purvis chops that one. Over to McCree. McCree to Simmons in time. So the 6-3 will retire the side with nothing across to end the bottom of the seventh. We'll bring you back to the top of the, or end of the bottom of the sixth. We'll bring you back to the bottom of the seventh in just a few short moments. Gracie Vanderford leading off in the top of the seventh for Mobile. Ennis delivers. Vanderford hits that one up high. And Polk is able to make the grab. 
just shy of going over the fence. First pitch, F9, will retire Vanderford and put one away for Mobile Rams. Jill Robinson now batting. That one's hit up high. Terrell camping underneath. Isn't able to make the grab. Don't know if the sun got in her eyes. Robinson will reach. That one hit down the left field line. one count now. Cut on that one. Can't get anything. So it's 0-2 now. One away. Runner on first. That one shot foul. Fouled off, 0-2 count now. That one. That one hits Sheffield, so that one is ruled hit by pitch. I will advance Robinson to second. That'll bring up Evans. So Coach Howwin is arguing the call here. There was a similar similar call when Polk was at the plate. Oh, he's going to talk to both officials. Is that that's what looks like. first base and the umpire behind the plate looking to see what the reasoning for that decision was why that was any different than the other call made previously Call remains the same. It's a hit by pitch. Robinson advances to second. And it's with the delivery, and that one misses. So 1 0 to Evans. Got two runners on, one in scoring position, one away. Top of the seventh for Mobile right now. And it delivers. That one hit up the shoot. Becker isn't able to make that grab. An impressive play over there. Just a foul ball. Her and Pittman both went over for it. It's like had it but just dropped it that one's fouled off
that one away. 2-2 two, two now. That one misses. That one misses. That one catches the zone. That one catches his own, so Ennis will strike black out looking. Limit the damage, stranding two. So no runs, no hits, one error, two left on base to end the top of the seventh, and the Lady Eagles will have at least one more chance on offense in the bottom of the seventh. And this is Lady Eagles softball on the Faulkner Sports Network. Number double zero, listed as zero and presto. Madeline Becker, first pitch called strike. So presto has a weird little glitch and Presto Sports is the um, statistic software that the NAIA uses. And it has a funny little bug where it will cause all sorts of issues if you input a player's number as double zero. So if you are following along on live stats and wondering why that is different, it is because that's the way that it has to be in the statistics software. So two one count now for Madeline Becker. Becker looking for something here. That one's chopped. To McCree and McCree to Simmons in time. Well, that'll bring up number eight, Gracie Pittman. That one's hit up high, foul past the home dugout. Foul ball brought to you by Jacob Bear of Alpha Insurance. That 
one misses. That one's hit up into the left side, so that'll be single for Pittman. Piss Pittman's first hit of the day. We'll bring up Erica Mitchell. Kaylee Harrison will be pinch running for Gracie Pittman at first. First appearance in game one. Good candidate to steal. Nine for nine on the season. So the throw back there. A 1 0 count now. A swing on that one. Harrison leading off. But delivery. Chopped foul. But that one chopped down left field line. And called Mitchell to hold up at first. So a single down the left field line will advance Harrison to second. The left fielder, number 16, Ivy Hill. And that'll bring the run, the leading run to the plate. Ashton Panel will be in for Mitchell to run at first. Two runners on, one away, bottom of the seventh. Go ahead run is at the plate. That's what I was trying to say earlier. That one's chopped foul. So 0 1 count now for Ivy Hill. That one's popped up foul past the home dugout. Brought to you by Jacob Bear of Alpha Insurance. Cover, covers foul ball damage. But luckily that one wasn't into the parking lot. That one's a bit low. Both runners aboard, candidates to steal. Ash 
Christian Panel. Three for three on the season with stolen bases. Hill, that one drops down the middle, so bases loaded with single up the middle for Hill. Panel advances to second, and Harrison advances to third. One away with Abby Terrell up to bat for the Lady Eagles. Terrell at the plate for Lady Eagles. That one catches the zone for a strike. That one's low. Chopped foul. So one two now for Terrell. Butts delivers. Terrell chops that one. It goes up the middle. And two will score, and that will tie the game. So a two RBI single up the middle for Abby Terrell. Will equalize the score, bottom of the seventh. And that'll bring up Evie Polk, so one away, two runners on, one in scoring position now. Tie ball game. Polk bunts, Simmons to Lanham. So the 3-4 sack bunt. Advance both Terrell and Hill into scoring position. Bring up leadoff batter Chloe Davidson. Butts delivers. That one chopped foul. Butts delivers. That one's hit foul. So 0-2 count for Davidson right now. That one chopped. Vanderford to Simmons. So the 5-3 will retire the side and bring us into extras. Two runs, four hits, no errors, and two stranded at the bottom of the seventh. Bring you to the top of the eighth in a few short moments. Back at the top of the order for Mobile in extras right now. Number 33, Megan McCartney. 
just joining us. It's the top of the eighth right now. The game is tied up three apiece. After a two RBI single from Abby Terrell, the bottom of the seventh. That one's fouled off. So 0 1 count now. Yes, delivery. That one's a bit high. That one delivered a bit high. Cartney, two for three on the day so far. That one catches his own first strike. One strikeout, one sacrifice. Slugging six, six, seven. That one's ripped foul. One, three, three, OPS. So far, two singles. That one's popped up high. Purvis camping underneath makes the grab, so the P6 will retire McCartney. Bring up Caitlin McCree. McCree also two for three on the day with a walk, two singles. First pitch called strike with a one four one seven OPS, a six. 6-7 slugging in a 7-5-0 OBP. 0-1 oh, count. That one misses high. 1-1 one, one now with one away. Fifth game this season. No, this would be the fourth game this season to go into extras. Fan on sitting on the outside of the chain link fence. Makes the grab. Well into foul ter territory there. This is the fourth game this season. Fourth conference game as well to go into extras. One with Middle Georgia. I believe both with I believe it was both with Boot and Parker. And then now, this game with Mobile. This delivers. That one's popped into the parking lot, hits a car. Brought to you by Jacob Bear of Alf Insurance. Our foul ball sponsor for baseball and softball. That one's hit right up the middle. Straight between Caitlin and Mrs. Feet. Hot shot right there. So single up the middle for McCree. I'll bring up Lily Lanham. 
That one's popped up foul past the visiting dugout. Lanham is one for four on the day. With her hit, with her lone hit being a double. Slugging 500. With a 750 on base percentage. Purvis. So the fielder's choice will retire McCree. So. Lanham will reach first, and McCree will be out at second. That one misses for a ball. So two away now for the Lady Rams. Runner on first, top of the eighth. That one's ripped foul. for a ball. The 2-1 now. Two away. Runner on first. Simmons at the dish. Swings on that one. So it's 2-2 two -two now. on that. That one misses somewhere and runs it full. Uh, so it's a full count now. Payoff pitch coming. Ennis gets the sign, the delivery. Simmons walks. Lanham will advance to second. And that'll bring up Gracie Vanderford. Vanderford, two for four on the day. Two singles, and one of those an RBI single. Flied out twice as well. That one catches his zone. 0-1 oh, count, two runners on, one in scoring position, two away for Ennis. That one delivered. That one will hit Vanderford, so that loads the bases. The well, base is loaded right now. Jill Robinson up to bat. Robinson looking to get something here now. 0 for 3. Ennis delivers. That one's popped up the shoot, and Becker camps underneath and makes the grab. So the Lady Eagles will get out of first half of the frame unscathed. With no runs, one hit, no errors, and three stranded at the end of the top of the eighth. We'll be back with the bottom of the eighth in a few moments.
swings on that one. Can't get anything. That one's hit up into foul territory. Vanderford makes a <laughs> diving effort over there. One's hit up high. It's in foul territory. Right by the fence of the home dugout. Brought to you by Jacob Bear of Alpha Insurance. Two two count now. That one's hit up high. Evans makes the grab, so the F7 will retire and Captain Segrist. Oh, yes, and Anna, Anna Purvis will be up. Sorry, I heard the different walk-up song and got confused. I was wondering about that, but just got cleared up because I've been very, very confused. Not the correct batter. <laughs> First pitch called strike. Oh, one count, one away. That one's a bit high. So one, one count now. Carroll, the delivery, and that one's just a bit outside. Big cut on that one, can't get anything. So it's 2-2 two -two now. Both that one's hit up foul into the parking lot. Brought to you by Jacob Bear of Alpha Insurance. So both Bruton Parker games and one of the Middle Georgia games went into extra innings, as well as this one right now. So it is it is the fourth conference game on Winfield this season that has been that. So Purvis hits it to Simmons. So the three U will retire Purvis and bring up Madeline Becker. Uh, that, that was what confused me earlier for a moment. Her Madeline Becker's walk-up song was playing, but Anna Purvis was supposed to be batting. Cuts on that one, can't get it. So 0-1. That one's hit up high. Black camps underneath, makes the grab. So the F8 will retire the side with nothing across in the bottom of the eighth. And that'll bring us to the top of the ninth. This is Lady Eagle Softball on the Faulkner Sports Network.
Sheffield opens the frame with a single to the left side. Bring up Maddie Evans. In his, del in his delivers, Evans drops bunt. Becker to Davidson with the sack bunt. So the 3-4 sack BU will advance Sheffield. Bring up Kristen Black. Made the grab to end the bottom of the eighth. Ennis delivers. That one in the zone for a strike. Ennis delivers, and that one misses. It's 1 1 now. That one misses. It's 2 1 now. One away. That one hit up to Polk, and Polk misses the grab. I'm going base hit on that. Since Black only reached first and Sheffield advanced to third, but I don't, there wouldn't have been a catch there. And so it was honestly a no harm, no foul. And since nobody advanced off of the bobble. A one now for that one's popped up high. The Purvis camps underneath. So the P6 will retire McCartney. All runners stay the same. So two away. Caitlin McCree on at the dish right now. Two way runners on the corners. It's the top of the ninth. No, it's not baseball. We're just in extras. 1-0 count now. Ennis delivers. That one's fouled straight back. Brought to you by Jacob Bear of Alpha Insurance. Ennis gets a sign. Delivers. That one's hit up high. And Polk. Camps underneath and makes the grab, secures that one. So the F9 will retire McCree. Bring an end to the top of the ninth with no runs, two hits, no errors, and two stranded. Bringing us to the bottom of the ninth in just a few moments.
Gracie Pittman. At bat for the Lady Eagles, first pitch, bit low. It's a 1-0 count now. That one's a bit low. It's a 2-0 count now. That one catches the zone. It's a 2-1 count now. Pittman one for three on the day. With a single. Slide out twice. That one's hit up high. And it's not quite gone. So just an F7 there, just shy of a home run. It was on the warning track right there, but just didn't lift enough. Hear a bit of the crowd's excitement in the background for a moment there. First pitch called strike. That one's fouled straight back. It's the side of the multiplex. It's brought to you by Jacob Bear of Alpha Insurance. Carroll delivers that one, takes hop skip from the dirt, so that'll be a ball. A one two count now with one away. We're in the bottom of the ninth. That one fouled back. Faulkner's in extras with the number 13 team in the country in Mobile. Abby Terrell had a Two RBI single in the bottom of the seventh that tied Faulkner up with Mobile. That one's fouled back again. Oh, after this next one, after th this one qualifies this at bat statistically as a quality at bat. So, I went into extras. One's fouled into the parking lot again. Mitchell battling to stay alive here. Harrell delivers and that one misses. So it's 2-2 now. Mitchell patiently waiting for either a good offering That one's hit up high. Black camps underneath and makes the grab. The F8 will retire Mitchell, put another one away. So two away now with Ivy Hill due up for the Lady Eagles. Left fielder, number 16, Ivy Hill. So two away now. The score is 3-3 three, three in the bottom of the ninth. That one catches his own for a strike. Harold delivers just a bit high. So 1-1 one, one now. That was two for three. The day that one's popped up high. Foul past the home dugout. Hill has two hits, one of those double with an RBI, ground out. Slugging 1,000, 666 on base percentage, and a 
1.667 OPS. That one's hit into left center. Black makes a throw, and that'll be another double for Hill. Hill's second double of the day. That'll bring up Abby Terrell. Terrell one for three. Terrell struck out there. One, no, no runs, one hit, no errors, and one stranded at the end of the bottom of the ninth. And that will bring us to the top of the tenth. So it goes into international tiebreakers. Runner on second. That was before, that's before the next runner in the batting air order. So Caitlin McCree will be on second base when we come back. So McCree on second. Lanham there. It's a 1-0 count now. And presto to input it. It's going to be R colon the number in the batting order that you want on the base, comma, two. Bunt drops. It's foul. So 1-1 one, one count now. Lanham dropped a bunt. Rolled foul. Lanham drops a bunt. Innis. So a bunt single right there. Vance McCree and Ennis looked around. For who to throw to? Slow roller, a tough grab, and then the fielders tried to anticipate where it's going to go. It went up further than anticipated because it rolled. So Lanham on first, McCree on third. Runners on the corners, no outs. Top of the 10th, Maya Simmons. No outs. Runners seem to be candidates to steal. So 1-0 count now.
Can't be too cautious here. So, Ennis faces, faces a bases loaded jam here in the top of the 10th with no outs. Ennis is responsible for the runners on first and second, but not McCree. The away. That one chopped. Purvis handles to Mitchell. So the 6-5 fielder's choice. Vanderford reaches on the fielder's choice. Simmons advances to second. Lantham out at third, 6-5. And McCree goes home. That one misses high. The 2-0 count now. So it's, the game is 4-3 with one away. Bases aren't loaded anymore. You got two runners on, one in scoring position, with Simmons being on second right now. How Wynn will go to talk to Ennis. For a moment, just a brief little meeting over at the mound. Jill Robinson, batter right now. That one called strike. That one catches. It's a 2 2 now. Looking to limit the damage here. Faulkner gets one more opportunity. That one misses. After that walk, to issuing a walk to Robinson. Simmons advances to third. Vanderford advances to second. Robinson on first. So with that hit by pitch, that will score another run for Mobile. So it's a 5-3 game right now. Sheffield gets an RBI and Faulkner looks here to make a pitching change. That will be freshman number seven, Haley O'Brien, in the circle now. Brian from Wetumpka went to Elmore County High School. Brian posting a 3-2-3 ERA, 0-1 record, appeared six times, which eight and two-third innings of work, allowed eight hits with five runs, four of those earned, issued four walks, two strikeouts, allowed one double, one triple, and a 2-4-2 batting average against. So,
functioned largely as a closer right now. I'm doing the same thing here. So Brian will pitch in relief for Innes here in the top of the 10th with one away. Faulkner here looks to limit the damage with the bases loaded here in extras to give them a better opportunity in the bottom of the frame to make something happen. That one's fouled back. So Evans is batting for Mobile right now. That one misses. Nice fastball there. That one catches the zone. So one, two count now, one away. Base is loaded. Evans swings on that one. That will retire Evans. Put another away. Only one more to go for O'Brien. With the last 5-3, that'll be four runs, two hits, no errors, and two left on base. Bottom of the tenth now, your score is seven to three. Yeah. 
Harrell delivers that one called strike. Polk fouls that one back. Two two now. Carroll on second with the international tiebreaker. Evie Polk currently in a battle with Harrell. So seven pitches into the at bat. Going on the eighth. Two two count now. Runner on second. Polk hits that one. Rips it foul on the left. Full count now. Approaching the 10th pitch of the at bat. Harold delivers. That one hit up high. It's going to be foul again. That one's ripped down the left side. So a single for Evie Polk. Advances Terrell to third. Brings up Chloe Davidson. The top of the order. That one fouled back, so 0-1 oh, count now. That one fouled back again. Davidson rips that one, but it draw it it rolls foul. I guess it didn't stay into fair territory for a long enough period of time. I'm not really sure what happened there, but it's foul. So still 0-2.
Harrell with the delivery. That one popped up. Fourth foul in a row. That one hit up well on the left side, so that'll score Terrell at the very least. Polk will make it to third, so that's a double for Chloe Davidson on the left side. Polk will advance to third, and Terrell will score, so an RBI double for Chloe Davidson. Anna Catherine Segrist. A quick little meeting at the mound on the Mobile side, so we'll be back in a moment. First pitch popped up foul. Segrist. Segrist watches that one by patiently. Called ball. That one's popped up foul. That one delivered, popped up. Vanderford. Makes an effort to get to it, but it is fouled into the dugout. That one misses. So 2 2 now. Foul straight back. That one's hit up right up the middle. That'll plate Polk. Vance Davidson to third, so an RBI single up the middle from Segrist. But that'll bring the score seven to five. Mobile still leading, but only by two now. Faulkner cu cuts the deficit by two. That'll bring up Purvis, so none away right now. Runners on the corners, that one's a bit low. So 1-0 count now. That one's foul tip back.
Harrell with the delivery. Purvis pops that one up. That'll bring the score seven to six. Faulkner only down by one, just needs one more to equalize. Go ahead, run at the plate. That one's a bit low. That one called strike. That one delivered and misses. It's a two one now. Fouled. So 2 2 now. That one fouled. So two away. Runner on second. It's the bottom of the 10th. Well, that one misses. So full count now, payoff pitch coming. Last pitch called strike. Or no, not strike, ball. That's why it's full count. Strike, then. That one's foul tipped back. So Harold gets the sign. Delivers. That one's a chopped foul. <laughs> yeah, it's chopped foul right into the dugout. <laughs> that one hit down the line, called foul. So, nine total pitches of this at-bat. Next one will be the 10th. Harrell, it's the sign, delivery. Pittman chops that one to Vanderford, and Simmons gets, Simmons gets to it in time, and that will end the game. So the 5-3 will retire the side. And at the end of the bottom of the tenth, there were three runs, three hits, no errors, and one stranded. So your final score is Mobile 7, Faulkner 6. So an incredibly close game right there in extras. Faulkner just wasn't quite able to do it, but got very close to upsetting the number 13 team in the country. We'll be back for game two in about 30 minutes. Well, this is Lady Eagle Softball on the Faulkner Sports Network.
here for game two at Winfield on the campus of Faulkner University. Game one, Faulkner fell just short, six to seven in extras. That one catches the zone. So 1-1 one, one count now for McCartney. That one's fouled back. Leading off and for Mobile is number 33, right fielder Megan McCartney. Batting second is Caitlin McCree. Playing shortstop. Batting third is Lily Lanham. Playing second base. Batting fourth is Maya Simmons. Playing Bert first base. Batting fifth is Gracie Vanderford. Playing third base. And that one's a bit high. So full count now. Batting six, number nine, Jill Robinson, a designated player. Batting seventh, Madeline Sheffield, playing catcher. Batting eighth, Maddie Evans, in the left field. Batting ninth, center fielder, number six, Kristen Black. And in the circle for a mobile, it's number seven, Brinkley Goff. McCartney walked. In the circle today for the Lady Eagles is Ivy Hill. Hill with a 198 ERA coming into the game. That one's hit up past Chloe Davidson. That'll be a single past second base. McCartney will advance to second from the McCree single. Ivy Hill with a 198 ERA coming into the game. Three and two record. Appeared six times, started five, pitched 28 and one third innings. Allowed 24 hits, eight runs, all of them earned. Six walks, struck out 18. Allowed five doubles, one home run with a 2 2 0 batting average against. So 1 0 count now. Two zero count now. Lanham pulled back on after showing bunt. That one dropped and it's going to be foul. The sack bunt attempt ends up foul. Yeah, very competitive game one makes room for a lot of excitement. Game two. Really close contest, not one bit low. I'm called strike actually. So three one now. So Hill gets a sign, delivers. That one catches. So full count now. That one popped up to the parking lot, brought to you by Jacob Bear of Alpha Insurance. <laughs> Runner on first and second, no outs. And Terrell ranges over. Makes the grab, so the F7 will retire Lanham. 
Runners will stay put. Bring up Maya Simmons for Mobile. That one catches his own for a strike, so 0-2 count now for Hill. That one popped up to shoot. Went into the away team dugout. So one, two count now. That gets the sign, delivers. Two two count now. Swings on that one. Can't get any of it. That will retire Simmons. Put one more away. So two away now. Runners on first and second. Gracie Vanderford at the dish. Cut on that one, can't get any of it. That one's a bit low. Vander for two for five last game. Scored a run with two RBIs. Fouled off. Strikeout. Retires the side, the end of the top of the first with no runs, one hit, no errors, and two left on base.
First pitch misses. Lead off batter for Faulkner. Chloe Davidson. That one's hit foul past the home dugout. Davidson was one for five last game, scored a run, and had an RBI. That one's hit to McCree, and McCree up and firing Simmons. So the 6 3 will retire Davidson. Anna Catherine Segrist up to bat. That one's foul tipped back. Almost hit a car there. Foul ball brought to you by Jacob Bear of Alpha Insurance. So 0 1 count, one away. No runners on. It's fouled back, so 0 2 now. That one's popped up. McCree. No, Lanham underneath it. So the P4 will retire Segrist and bring up Anna Purvis, designated player in game two. Short stop in game one. Anna Catherine Segrist and Anna Purvis switch spots as far as fielding goes, and that one's popped up. <laughs> Megan McCartney ranges over and makes the grab. So the F9 will retire the side. Nothing across. This is Lady Go Softball on the Falcons Sports Center. Do up for the Rams is Joe Robinson. Robinson was catcher in game one, now designated player. That one's fouled back. I believe it was. Yep, fouled back. That one's hit up high. Panel camping underneath makes the grab. The F9 will retire Robinson and bring up Madeline Sheffield for Mobile. That one popped up high to right field and panel makes the grab again. Two consecutive F9s, we'll put two away. Bring up Maddie Evans for Mobile.
That one hit up high and would have been a great effort there by Terrell. So single to left field. Wasn't quite able to do anything with it, but. Well, base hit gets Evan on board. So Hill, that one fouled back. So Kristen Black. Remaining in the same spot in the lineup, offensively and defensively, for game two. The 0-1 count now, two away for Hill. That one hit straight up the middle. That's a really good defensive effort there. Davidson stopped it from rolling, gets it to Segrist. Segrist puts her foot on the bag to make the tag, so the 4-6 Fielder's choice will retire the side for the Lady Eagles. So no runs, one hit, no errors, and one left on base to the end of the top of the second. This is Lady Eagles softball on the Faulkner Sports Network. Becker hits that one up high. Black camps underneath, makes the grab. First pitch, F8. We'll put one away and bring up number 17, Erica Mitchell. Mitchell. Third base from game two as well. That one misses and catches his own for a strike. That one popped up. Vanderford makes the grab, so the P5. But another one away, so two away now, no runners on. Sarah Williams up to bat. Sarah. That one in the zone for a strike. That one's drops into right center. Went up high. Couldn't tell where it was going to drop. Had three defenders on it. Couldn't tell where it was going, so Single for Sarah Williams. Shallow right center. That'll bring up Abby Terrell. That one misses away.
That one fouled straight back. 2-1 now. No, 1-1 one, one now. 1-2. One, I, I had it right. I just switched it. Oof. Throw back over to first. Not in time, so nothing there. 2-2. Two, two. Full count now. Last pitch away. Payoff pitch coming. Goff gets the sign, delivers. Cut on that one. Can't get it, so swing strikeout will retire the side. So no runs, one hit, no errors, and one left on base. We'll end the bottom of the second and bring us to the top of the third in a few short moments. Back at the top of the order, back at the top of the order for Mobile with Megan McCartney at bat. Same place offensively and defensively for as game one. That one misses. Hill, it's a sign, delivers. That one foul tipped back. So Hill gets a sign, delivers, and that changeup gets McCartney. So strike three from a nasty changeup. Off speed, absolutely filthy. We'll bring up Caitlin McCree for Mobile. That one's hit into center. Harrison gets it back to Davidson, so limits the damage to only a single. McCree reaches first. So one away, runner on first. Lily Lanham up to bat for Mobile. That one hit up high. Harrison ranging over. The panel 
makes the grab, so some insurance on defense right there. So the F9 will tire Lanham. And Maya Simmons will be up now. So two away runner on first. After two quick fly outs. That one's hit up and Davidson makes the grab. So the P4 will retire the side for the one, two, three with no runs. Or not quite the one, two, three, the four. So there was a single. Um, with no runs, one hit, no errors, and one left on base. Leading off the bottom of the third, Ashton Pano. That one's popped up foul. Hits the side of the building. Brought to you by Jacob Bear of Alpha Insurance. Big cut on that one. So 0 2 now. That one popped up into the parking lot. Brought to you by Jacob Bear of Alpha Insurance. So it's an 0 2 count now. That one misses away. So one, two. That one popped up high. Foul territory. So hits the top of the home dugout. So officially qualifies for quality at bat. So the six pitch incoming. That one popped up high into foul territory again. So slight breeze, not as strong as it was before. One oh count now. That one missed. Yeah. 
That one missed as well. So 3-1 now. That one swings on that one. So full count now for Harrison. Harrison walks after that. She'll reach first, and that will bring us to the top of the order for Faulkner. Chloe Davidson. Chloe Davidson at bat. That one hit up high. Black. Range is over, makes the grab. So ranging F8 will retire Davidson. Harrison will remain at first. Shortstop Anna Catherine Segrist will be at the dish for Faulkner. That one fouled back. That one catches the zone. That one called strike. Segrist out looking will retire the side with no runs, no hits, no errors, and one stranded at the end of the bottom of the third. We'll be back with the top of the fourth with Lady Eagle Softball and the Falcon Sports Network in a bit. Gracie Vanderford leading off the top of the that one fouled away to the away dugout. Off speed pitch yet again. Sir with the change up. It's really, really tough. The way it hops. That one hit up. Davidson scoops it, gets it to Becker. So the four three will retire Robinson. Bring up Madeline Sheffield. It's a two away now in the top of the fourth. Sheffield also looking for something here. 0 for 1 today. That one popped up the shoot. 
Becker camping underneath in foul territory. So the PF3 will retire the side and bring us to the bottom of the fourth. This is Lady Eagles softball on the Faulkner Sports Network. Back here in the bottom of the fourth. You got a 1-1 one, one count. That one fouled back. So 1-2 now. Anna Purvis at the dish. That one hit up. Just foul. off it's the sign livers that one's hit up high Landham camping underneath so the P4 will retire Purvis and bring up Madeline Becker your player of the week Goff looking for something in game two. I meant Becker. Becker looking for something in game two. Goff has thrown 39 pitches right now. 28 of them being strikes. That one's hit up high into foul territory. Vanderford looking to range over, but over by the chain link fence. So that one hit up and to right field, McCartney camping underneath. So the F9 will put another one away and bring up Erica Mitchell for the Lady Eagles. That one hit up the middle. Looked like McCree wanted to get her glove to it, but 
Went a little bit over, more over to the right. So single up the middle for Mitchell. We'll get her on first. And Sarah Williams will be at the dish for Faulkner. So 1 0 count now for Williams. That one missed. It's 2 0 now. That one hit well up the middle. Mitchell will advance to second. So back to back singles up the middle will put runners on first and second. So Abby Terrell, Abby Terrell. now at the dish. Terrell playing left field. Game two, that one misses away for a ball. Misses. That one doesn't miss. One before it missed, that one gets his own. It's 2 1 now. That one missed as well. So it's 3 1 now. Abby Terrell will reach first on a walk. That'll load the bases for Faulkner. Goff is facing two outs, bases, lo bases loaded jam right now. And Ashton Panel at the dish right now. She's got bases loaded. So big opportunity for Faulkner. There's still an opportunity for Mobile to get out of this unscathed. Panel. That one popped up the chute. Simmons camping underneath makes the grab. So the P3 will retire the side. Bring it to the top of the fifth your score your score list in the top of the fifth this is Lady Eagle Softball on the Faulkner Sports Network
Harrison makes the grab off the first pitch, F8. So Evans is retired. That'll bring up Kristen Black. That one popped up. P4, bring up McCartney. That one fouled into the parking lot. Brought to you by Jacob Bear of Alpha Insurance. Who with the delivery? That one also hit foul. That one hit up into right field and foul territory. So the FF9 will retire the side with nothing across to end the top of the fifth. This is Lady Eagle Softball on the Faulkner Sports Network. Leading off the bottom of the fifth for the Lady Eagles, number 20, Kaylee Harrison. That one's hit up high. It's foul. Evans. Running over towards it. That one hit up foul. O oh, two count now. Strikes out Harrison. It'll bring up Chloe Davidson. Back at the top of the order. The second baseman, number one, Chloe Davidson. That one hit well into left center. It's a single for Davidson. 
first hit of game two. The shortstop, number three. And our second hit of the day, I believe. Davidson, second hit of the day. And a Catherine Segrist at the dish. That one missed. That one hit up in the center. Black scoops it. Gets it to McCree. Limits the damage to a single. So two runners on, one away right now. Anna Purvis at the dish. Madeline Becker on deck. That one. Hit to McCree. So the 6-3 ground out will advance both runners on. Bring up Madeline Becker, who's in the cleanup spot for the Lady Eagles. So two away, two runners in scoring position right now. Still scoreless in the bottom of the fifth. Goff delivers. That one popped up the chute. Sheffield camps underneath, makes the grab. So the P2 will retire the side with no runs, two hits, no errors, and two stranded. To end the bottom of the fifth, we'll bring you the top of the sixth in just a few moments. That one drops foul. So it looked like it was about to go fair, but then took a turn. So it's across the foul line. Hill thrown 49 pitches with 35 strikes. Struck out three and issued one walk. Still scoreless here in the top of the sixth. That one misses. Ball. He'll face 19 batters, including McCree so far. After five innings of work. That one hit right to panel. So panel makes the grab and puts one more away. One away, I should say. So the F9 will tire McCree. So one away now. Top of the sixth. He'll face 19 batters so far, about to face her 20th. Two. Looking strikeouts. That one popped up foul in the parking lot. Brought to you by Jacob Bear of Alpha Insurance. Ten flyouts, three ground outs. Completed five and one-third innings of work. Allowed three hits, issued one walk, three strikeouts so far. So he's been very efficient. That one misses. Lanham up to bat now. So two count for Lanham. That one.
called a ball. So one, two now. So two, one now. That one misses. So three, one now. So one away, no runners on top of the sixth right now. 3-1 count. Delivery, and that one misses. So Lanham will reach first on a walk and bring up Simmons. Maya Simmons. 0 for 2 in game 2. Fly out and strike out. That one misses. 1 0 count. That one hit up high. Panel gets up against the wall and makes that catch. So a well-hit ball from Simmons ends up being an F9. Panel slams up against the wall. So Lanham will remain at first. Another one away. Vanderford up for Mobile. Hill delivers, and that one's hit foul into the parking lot. The foul ball brought to you by Jacob Bear of Health Insurance. Got some students hanging out over there. <laughs> Almost got hit. That one hit straight up the middle. Segrist, it's the force out at second. So the six U, the fielder's choice up the middle, will retire the side and bring us to the bottom of the sixth. This is Lady Eagle Softball on the Faulkner Sports Network. So Erica Mitchell do up for the Lady Eagles. At the bottom of the six, still scoreless here. Mobile has three hits and Faulkner has five and that one misses away. So very competitive game one and very competitive game two here. Big cut on that one. So 1-1 one, one now. Really important game for both teams. That 
That one popped up high. Knowing the foul territory. It's foul. So one, two. That one hit up into foul territory. No one's able to get to it. So that one misses. So two two now. low. So three, two. That one's popped up high. That one popped up foul. So full count. Battle right here between Mitchell and Goff. Mitchell strikes out on that to put one away, and that'll bring up Sarah Williams. That one called strikes, a 2 1. That one hit foul. So 2 2 now. Full count now for Williams. That one hit up foul.
Williams walks. Evie Polk will be in as a pinch runner over at first. And Abby Terrell is due up for the Lady Eagles. So one away, a runner on first right now in the bottom of the sixth. First pitch called strike. O two count now. So one, two now. That one popped foul. So the PF2 will tire Terrell. Folk will remain at first. Panel. Do up for the Eagles. That one misses. One, two now. That one foul tipped off. That one's hit up high in the foul territory. Left field. So it's still 2-2 two -two with two away. The runner on first. That one popped foul.
That one's hit foul. Ongoing battle here. Looking at the ninth pitch upcoming of this at bat. That one hit up high. It drops foul deep into left field territory. So nine total pitches at this at bat. Five of them fouls. So still 2-2. Two -two. So still scoreless. The bottom of the sixth. Ashton Panel at bat. Facing off golf. That one misses. It's a bit high. So after 13 pitches, Ashton Panel will reach first on a walk. The Polk will advance to second and bring up Kaylee Harrison. So two away now for... The Lady Eagles. Yeah, very disciplined there. Didn't give up. That one called strike. That one. Misses. So 1-1. One, one. Off the livers. That one misses as well. 2-1. So That one misses as well, so it's 3-1 now. Saying... Harrison will reach first on the hit by pitch. So base is loaded two away now. And Chloe Davidson at the dish. So back to the top of the order for the Lady Eagles. One of the best places to be with bases loaded. Goff thrown 92 pitches so far, 58 of them strikes. That one's fouled back. Brought to you by Jacob Bear of Alpha Insurance. So we're still in the bottom of the six, two away. Base is loaded. So that one fouled back. That one fouled back. Seems to be the common theme. So Goff gets the sign. 
Rocks, fires, delivers. Davidson hits that one. Hit it to Vanderford. Looked like it was a little bit too much to handle, but Davidson almost beats out the throw. But is just shy of getting to the bag. But Simmons was able to get it in time. A great effort there. So a 5-3 will retire the side. So no runs, no hits, no errors. Three stranded to end the bottom of the six, and that'll bring us to the top of the seventh. So back here, Lady Eagles softball. It's the top of the seventh. Sarah Williams re-entering. First pitch misses away to Robinson. That's fouled back into the parking lot. Hits the windshield of the car. Now I always get nervous about parking in either baseball field or softball field parking lots. That one misses. Like, to me, I, I don't... I don't even want to take the risk. You know, you think, oh, well, may not happen to me. Well, there was one time I saw a back windshield of a car get shattered over at the, the baseball field. That one's hit well into left field. And Terrell makes the grab. So the F7 will retire Robinson and put one away. Bring up Madeline Sheffield. As I was saying, it's it's not fun, and most insurance companies won't cover that. And obviously, the facility that you're at, most of them have a sign that say "Park here at your own risk." So that one's hit up high. Harrison camping underneath, making the grab. So the F8 will retire Sheffield and bring up Maddie Evans to the dish. Evans hits that one up high. Harrison camping underneath. So the one, two, three inning will retire the side with nothing across to end the top of the seventh. Put Faulkner back on offense for at least one more time.
So Anna Catherine Segrist at the dish for the Lady Eagles. First pitch misses low. It's the bottom of the seventh. Still scoreless right now. That one hit up to Vanderford. And gets it to Simmons. So in time. So a 5-3 put out. We'll retire Seagrest in time. Bringing up Anna Purvis to the dish. That one's popped up high. Lanham camping underneath. So the P4 will retire Purvis. Bring up Madeline Becker. That one's low. So 1 0 count now, two away, no runners on. The bottom of the seventh. Any score right now will conclude the game. That one's ripped foul to the left side. Off. It's the sign. Becker calls time. So another quick moment here. Goff delivers. That one misses. So it's a two one count now. Off the delivery. That one also misses, so it's 3 1 now. Goff thrown 104 pitches. 103 pitches, excuse me, 65 of them strikes. That one ripped foul. Full count. That one chopped foul. Mm. Off delivers. Becker rips that one foul down the left side. That one's chopped. Foul. So it's still full count. Ninth pitch of the at bat coming. The two away, bottom of the seventh. Full count. No runners on. That one chopped foul to the left side. So the tenth pitch incoming now.
Goff, sign delivers that one in the dirt. Becker will walk after 10 pitches. And that'll bring up number 17, Erica Mitchell. So a pinch runner is going to be in at first. Let's see who it is. It's going to be number 26, Brianna Boyd, to pinch run at first. Allison Cook. Quick meeting with Goff while the substitution happens. To Goff, throwing 109 pitches, 70 strikes. So just under 70% of what she's throwing are strikes. Sixty four percent to be exact. That one popped up the shoot foul. Boyd running at first, two away. Mitchell at the dish. O oh, one count. The bottom of the seventh. So that one's hit right up the middle. So Boyd will advance to second. So a single up the middle for Mitchell will have her reach first, and Boyd will advance off the single. Sarah Williams will go up to bat for the Lady Eagles. Two away, two on, one in scoring position. Bottom of the seventh. That one's hit up high. Well, Evans camps underneath and makes the grab. So the F7 will retire the side. And we will be going into extras yet again. The bottom of the seventh. So no runs, one hit, no errors, and two stranded. This is Lady Eagle Softball on Faulkner Sports Network. So both pitchers have completed seven innings of scoreless work. A really good defensive effort from both teams. So both games today went into extras. Game one went into the international tiebreaker, and that's a strikeout for Ivy Hill. Black strikes out looking, bringing up Megan McCartney. To the top, so we're at the top of the order now for Mobile. So Hill was her fourth strikeout of the day. 
That one's hit up, and Davidson isn't able to make that grab. That would have been an impressive play right there if she were able to. So it's a base hit into right center. Almost had to make a leaping effort there. She did have to make a leaping effort there, but she almost got it. Touched her glove, but great effort today. A great effort defensively from the Lady Eagles. Had a lot of plays where you think, okay, they're not able to get to that, and they've managed something out of it. That one's hit right at the middle. Segrist bobbles, gets it to Davidson in time. Able to recollect. So the fielder's choice hit up the middle. Be the 6-4 put out to the runner on second. Lily Lanham. So it's two away, runner on first. So another great effort between Segrist and Davidson. Saw one earlier as a fielder's choice up the middle. Davidson stopped it. Oh, wasn't quite able to catch McCree stealing. So it's a stolen base for McCree. Had the throw there, but Segrist just wasn't able to get control of it. She'll swipe second. Yeah, the fielder's choice up the middle. Davidson stops the ball from rolling too far and then gets it to Segrist to tag the bag. So the 4-6 put out second base. So the count is 1-1 one, one now. So Hill delivers. That one hit, and that was foul. Mitchell was looking back, extending her glove to make the grab. Wasn't able to get to it, but it was foul nonetheless. So 1-2 count now. Two away. Runner on second. Lily Lanham at the dish. So Hill, it's a sign, delivers. That one chopped. Just hit foul. So Hill delivers. That one goes foul to the right. <laughs> that one. Popped up over the dugout. It's a quality at bat. Got four consecutive fouls right now. So one cute two count, two away, top of the eighth. That one's hit foul again. So Hill, it's a sign. The delivery. That one's hit up foul again. Panel. Running towards it, stops at the chain link fence over there. So eight total pitches for this at bat. That one's low. So it's a 2-2 two -two count. That's 2-2 two -two count with two away, runner on second. That one's 
hit up, and Harrison ranges over, makes the grab, so the F8 will retire the side. The end of the top of the eighth, no runs, one hit, no errors, and one stranded. This is Lady Eagle Softball on the Faulkner Sports Network. Bottom of the eighth. Terrell leading off for Faulkner. Terrell looking for something here in game two. Had a notable two RBI single in game one to extend the game into extras. Tied up at three apiece. First pitch misses away. Cut on that one, can't get anything. That one misses. So it's 2-1 now. So count is 3-1 now. That one's just a bit low. So that will walk Terrell. She'll reach first. Walk issued from Goff. That'll bring up Ashton Panel. Scoreless through seven and a half. That one's popped up. So the bunt popped up to the catcher. So be scored as a PF2. Terrell will remain at first, and Harrison will be up next at the dish. So one away now. Harrison drops bunt. Vanderford gets it to Simmons in time. So the 5-3 sack BU. Advanced Terrell to second. So two away, Terrell on second. Davidson up to bat, so back to the top of the order now. Goff gets the sign, delivers. That one misses. That one's low. Two O. 
two outs. Goff delivers. That one misses. So it's 3-0 now. That one called strike. So full count now. That one's popped up foul. So another meeting at the mound between Goff and Sheffield. I believe this might be one of the last meetings at the mound that is allowed. Yeah, we keep needing more softballs. There's a lot of foul balls this game. So full count, two away. Runner on second right now. In the bottom of the eighth. delivered and that one popped up foul. <laughs> that one hit on the left side and Abby Terrell rounds third and scores. So an RBI double for Chloe Davidson will end the game. Faulkner upsets the number 13 team in the country. So nothing was able to stop that ball. Looked like Evans was trying to field it, but wasn't able to manage anything. That will conclude game two. So Faulkner with an upset 1-0 over Mobile. So Faulkner and Mobile will split the day. A close game one. Faulkner falling to Mobile with Mobile score 7-6, to six, Mobile winning. In game two, Faulkner winning over Mobile. 1-0 game. In extra, so both games went into extras today. Seventeen or eighteen innings of softball, or seventeen and two thirds innings of softball. <laughs> so that will conclude the game for the Lady Eagles. So a good game today, a good series to start off. So Faulkner and Mobile are now equal in the conference standings still. Both sitting at nine and three. 
Both teams sitting at nine and three apiece. This is now the fifth conference game on Winfield this season that has gone into extras. We're excited to see you back here tomorrow at 1 p.m. when Faulkner faces William Carey in another conference series. This has been myself, Trinity Thomas, Ben Anderson, Seth Page, Grayson Plunkett, Anaya Hunt, Devin Trawick, Ali Setnerowitz, and all of the Faulkner Sports Network crew here for this production of Lady Eagle Softball on the Faulkner Sports Network. God bless and go Eagles.